Greetings. I am Bill Guffian, Bishop for the Indiana Kentucky Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Welcome to our sermon and prayers for Sunday, October 3rd, 2021, the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for that life that is faithful and steadfast and teach us to trust like little children that we may reflect on the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, or sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance, beloved child of God, from God our Creator, through the Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Only once or twice in my life, have I been far enough away from the lights of civilization to see the night sky in all of its beautiful, majestic splendor. The first one was when I was in high school. Our congregation's youth group spent a week canoeing our way through parts of what are known as the Boundary Waters. It's a series of waterways on the border between Canada and northern Minnesota. Late at night, many, many miles from any human-generated light, the sky looked crowded with stars and moon and planets. We beheld the majesty of the Milky Way, the stunning, almost unbelievable splendor of the Northern Lights, and what seemed like hosts of meteors skidding across the sky. Almost 50 years later, if I close my eyes and let my mind rest, I can still see and be moved by the glimpses I got of God's heavens, the work of God's fingers, the moon and the stars that God has set in their courses. Of course, the ancient poet who wrote Psalm 8 which I heard and read for the first time on that canoe trip, did not have city lights to contend with in gazing into the heavens night after night. That poet's own stargazing moved him or her to wonder about the creator whose glory exceeds the heavens and who is nevertheless mindful of each and every puny human being. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them? Human beings, that you should care for them. God, the creator and ruler of the universe, is mindful of us. Every one of us, human beings, along with all creation, God is mindful of us. 
Methodist pastor Mark Rawls has suggested that mindfulness is love that resists distraction. Love that resists distraction. It's a staunch refusal to fall into absent-mindedness. It is focused, sustained attention toward the beloved. God is mindful of humanity. God is mindful of you and of me and of every person around us and around the globe. Of course, we see what this mindfulness, this focused, sustained attention toward the beloved looks like in Jesus. When religious leaders were concerned about who's right and who's wrong, who's in and who's out, when Jesus' own followers argued over who was greatest and tried to keep people who were not part of their insider's club from doing God's work, Jesus reached out and took children, those who are little, lost, left out, even unseen in human-generated light, and refusing to be distracted and as an embodiment of God's own mindfulness. Jesus took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Even on the cross, on the day that we now call Good Friday, the day when we are told in scripture that during the brightest part of the day, darkness came over the whole land, as the incarnation of the persistent, unquenchable, mindful love of God, Jesus focused on the thief beside him and loved him and said, today, you will be with me in paradise. As Julian of Norwich put it, human beings are clothed in divine love. Our Lord, she wrote, is our clothing. For God is that love which wraps and enfolds us, embraces and guides us surrounds us. Unfortunately, as we live day by day in the human-generated city lights of the knit and grit of daily challenges, amid extended twists and turns in the coronavirus wilderness, in a world that seems to move ever more deeply into divisiveness and derision, the steady, persistent, sustained mindfulness and love of God for us and others can be difficult to see. We keep turning away from the beauty of God's mindfulness for us. We think we don't need this love. We think we don't deserve it. Sometimes we just become unfocused, absent-minded, and just forget about this love. And we fail to have the same mind in us that was in Christ Jesus on the cross, and we forget about sharing the self-giving love of God with others who also hold God's attention. Siblings in Christ, that's when it's time to trace the mark of the cross on our foreheads and launch a canoe into the baptismal boundary waters, the restorative waterways on the border between death and life, despair and hope, bondage to sin and forgiveness, forgetfulness and mindfulness. Along the boundary waters, away from the bright lights that obscure God's faithfulness, we traverse the stream of worship with others. We swim in the refreshing waters of scripture. We paddle in living pools of prayer. We gaze into the majestic night sky and see and point out for each other the shimmering mindfulness of God. Floating on the baptismal boundary waters, the splendor of God's consistent, persistent attention to and love for us, for others, for the world, becomes clear again. Again and again, we return to the baptismal boundary waters to ask the poet's question, which has now become ours. What are we that you, O oh God, are mindful of us, that you should care for us? 
sitting together along the bank, gazing at the night sky, free for a moment of the blinding light of both human conceit and self-deprecation, we listen again for the simple, life-changing reply. I created you. I love you. You are mine forever. O oh Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, you have raised up faithful leaders throughout history. Empower those discerning a call to public ministry and all seminarians, especially those whom we know, that they continue to be formed for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have established a diverse and beautiful creation, O God. Revive declining species and preserve endangered lands. Cultivate in us a sense of wonder for the world that you have created. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You desire for us to not be alone and to live in community with one another. Strengthen relationships between nations and peoples that we celebrate and support one human family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You share in our experiences and struggles, O God. Bless all who live with any mental or physical disabilities. Inspire creative communities, spaces, and environments that are accessible and hospitable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are mindful of us and you care for us and for all people in creation, O oh God. Teach us to have the mind of Christ in our relationships with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You promise eternal life to all your children. Thank you for the people of faith who have gone before us, who have shown with your mercy and love for us. Strengthen our trust that we have in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you.